Hello and welcome to Murphy's Garden and I'm in a rather messy part of the garden. This history of this part of our garden, this used to be the old vegetable patch when we first moved in. We made this into a lovely little vegetable patch and it served us very well for the first few years um, until it got a bit too small and also it didn't get loads and loads of sun so we decided to relocate it up to, to where it is now and over the period since then it's been used as sort of a holding bay for stock plants where, when I buy hedging and things like that I put it in here but it just looks a real mess it's full of weeds and when it was a vegetable patch I remember getting um, lots of horse manure in and it was full of nettle seedlings and it was it, so as a result it's always always had a big nettle problem and it has again um, so we've decided two things really that have been quite inspiring was that when we went to Tatton, we saw that lovely little garden. We saw a couple of little gardens that we thought looked really cute and really nice. Um, one was the Apocryphy garden, which was lovely. Um, and we thought it was about the same size as this area. And also, Livia wants to do a Tatton garden. Um, she wants to perhaps do a long border next year and then maybe the young designer garden the following year. So Alistair said to her, well, why don't you have a go, a practice at doing it in this area? This area is about the size of a show garden. So why not make this your um, mission to redesign this area? So she's going to work on the design. I am the client. I've told her what I want. And she's, we're on a similar page anyway. We kind of got good ideas of what we want. And she can go and do some designs. She can do it on CAD and just put her university skills into practice and see what she comes up with. But I thought perhaps today I would um, make the most of having a day off and perhaps make a start on clearing it, even if I just do the weeds. Alistair said he'll help me. We've got to lift all this stock and perhaps pot it up or do something with it. But I really want to just get the site cleared. So this is the before um, and hope one day we will eventually get to the after and we create something wow, something fabulous. But we're quite a long way off from that at the moment. But we'll just make a start. We've got the lovely little potting shed at the back, which we thought would be quite nice to put a little window in this side. That would look cute. And the other thing we've got up in our attic, we've got some old, lovely big metal old water tanks. They're in the attic and they're probably going to be a bit of a nightmare to get out without scraping the wallpaper and the hall and stuff. But anyway, we're going to give it a go. If we can use those, then that would be fantastic because they'd make lovely raised borders. And I would like to have, um, you know, raised, raised areas here for planting in. So I'm going to make a start. So I'll just start on the nice part of the garden, just so if any of you are looking at this video for the first time and you just see this awful bit I'm about to show you, we have got we have got quite a nice garden elsewhere. So that's the nice part. Now we'll go into the hideous part. So this is a warts and all tour. I'm going to show you what the issues are. So this is a box tree, which I cut the bottom out of that pot so it might have roots going into the ground. Um, we've got some, we've got a steeper gigantia spare one. That's worth something. That's good. We've got a unanimous here, um, a limelight, an extra limelight hydrangea, loads and loads of horrible weeds. And this is yew hedging. This is spare yew hedging, which is very valuable. And there must be about one, two, three, four, five, six, I don't know, about eight yew trees there. So we'll, we'll do something with those because they're lovely. Um, a unanimous, standard unanimous, it did have, it was one of a pair and the other one died in the frost. I never water it, but it seems to be still alive. And these are two Quercus Ilex trees that I've bought for the front. I love them. They're, they've got this lovely Mediterranean look about them and you can see one of them's getting massive and we're probably going to have a nightmare getting them out. They've been in far too long. They weren't, they were only put in here temporarily and then we didn't move them. So we need to dig those out and cut them down, shape them up a bit and get them into pots because what we like to do is use those in the front when we get eventually get round to do in the front. This is some beach hedging which I bought to do the area where we've now put the trellis. We were going to put, I was going to put um, beach in here and then we decided against it. So it was stuck in, um, it was bought bare root and just stuck in temporarily. It's been in here now getting on for two years. So that really needs to be used. And I've got an idea what we might do with that because we think if we can get the tanks down, we could put them along here. Um, and then maybe plant the beach in them as well. So I thought that would look quite nice. Well, it was Olivia's idea, actually. So we'll see. Um, here's, I don't know why I've put this crocosmia in there. I was digging it out somewhere. I don't want it, so I'm going to get rid of that. 
Um, this is just some some little, these were little kind of pom-pom trees. I think there's two, is there two there? Yeah, so something could be done with those. And then loads and loads of box. I don't really have a use for this, but we'll have a think about it. I mean, I mean some of them, this was, these were my two original ones in our last house and they got, something happened to them, they nearly died. And they were put in here just to see if they recover and they have recovered. So we can cut those up, cut, not cut them up, cut them into nice shapes and put them either side of an entrance or something, they would be nice and they're worth a lot of money and some box hedging here which will be useful when we come to do the area in the sunken part of the garden because we, we will need a bit more box to um, we're going to make it in an, an area a seating area and we'll put box around it so actually all of this box might be useful for that area so it's all useful so even some more um, you they were just you seedlings so as you can see I'm a bit of a hoarder um, and then down this side horrible nasty weeds um, this is a climbing hydrangea. It's not looking too well, really, is it? So, it's, but it has got a lot of growth and it would be lovely if it covered. This is a very large expanse of um, wall all the way up to our house and there's nothing, no interest on this wall. So we need to do something with that to make it a bit more interesting. And um, we've got the woodshed here, which doesn't need to be there. That can move. And then on top of this little potting shed, which is very cute, we've got this clematis which is stunning it's a clematis montana and it looks lovely but it does need a cut and i was thinking it would be quite nice i've been making all these wreaths using dried flowers so i was wondering whether we could use some of that when we cut it back a bit to make some wreaths with it we've got a gutter on there with a water butt uh, which looks very ugly but it's useful to have water and it would be useful to have water if it's going to be a cutting garden i thought it'd be quite nice to, if we can put a little window on there and maybe even one of the tanks underneath as a little kind of dunking, your yeah, little tank that you can dunk your water, watering can in. Then this is the lovely little potting shed. It's not so lovely because it's full of spiders and cobwebs. I don't really want to go in there. But my bike's in there, a couple of old bikes that are never used. So perhaps we'll um, sell those, get rid of the bikes. We don't really use them. And this is the wood splitter. So other than that, it's dry, it's signed, it was not signed, it's got a lot of, we need to sort out the brickwork. Um, so, but it could be lovely, don't you think? And then this is the entrance from the front of the property. So if I could get to a point where we make this into something nice, this is the area that if you're coming into our garden, you would come round from the front through this area. This is why it's important to make it look better because this is the, the view that you would see if you're coming through from that that direction lots of accumulation of pots full of weeds i don't know why so they all need to go so that's my job and i'm going to make a start and this is day two of my clear up so i've got rid of some of the weeds not all but i've made a bit of a start and now i'm just going through all the um, stock planting so i'm just potting things up and putting the beach hedging in about five per, per quite big pot, five litre pot. Got quite, there's quite a lot in there actually. <clears throat> I've got to try and get those home oaks out and, um, and the yew is going to be a bit more tricky. But even things like this, unanimous, I'm not saying it's going to stay there, but it's actually doing okay. I've given it a bit of a trim and then I can water it and perhaps start looking after it a bit and see if it balls up a little bit more. Okay, we're getting on really well now. So just a bit of an update. Um, that pot's broken, trying to get the um, box out, but that's okay. Um, we've potted up the um, beach. That's all in pots. We've put about two or, th or three or four in, a, in each of the pots. We've managed to get all the box out. Some of it we've put in the grind where it's gonna go, around in the, the new seating area in the sunken garden. And then here we've got, um, some more box which we've put in pots. I haven't watered it because we're going to move it and I don't want to make it heavier than it need be. We've even got a bay which I didn't realise was in there and it's the only one that survived. All the other ones died in the winter so I've tried to sort of shape it up a bit and we've got these little um, Leyland cypress, cypressy kind of um, things which could be pom-pommed so that's quite good. We've got that in a pot and all these um, box pyramids could be toperized and made to look a bit nicer so 
we've got some quite nice stock here. And we've, Alice just managed just to get the crocus ilex out. So we're going to move those now up into a big, big pot. We've got two massive pots. Um, in fact, the roots weren't as big as we thought. So they need to be shaped up as well, but they're lovely. So we're getting there. Livia's been helping. She's good at digging. We've moved um, quite a lot and Al's helped with the crocus ilex. So fantastic. We spent yesterday just finishing clearing off, off this site. Everything's been potted up that was in here. All the plants are, are now in new homes or in pots. And the only thing that remains, we've got some yew hedging on this side. I think maybe about seven or so um, yew trees. So they can stay there for the moment because they're not in the way currently. Um, and um, what we've done, I've hand weeded all this meticulously on my hands and knees. And um, then Alistair came along with the um, tiller and has tilled the site because we wanted it nice and smooth and um, just a blank canvas so we can kind of think what it is we want to do. Livy has been working very hard over the last two days to come up with a CAD design and um, just based on what we want for the site. Um, she's taken all that on board and she's come up with an absolutely fabulous design, which I never would have thought of in a million years. Now I'll hand over to Olivia and she can show you the design that she's come up with. I got set the task of redesigning the garden, but before I set about designing anything, it was really important to establish what we actually wanted from the space. So we all had a discussion and it was decided that we wanted to use the garden as a cutting garden where we could grow, produce and also potentially sell cut flowers. Um, we also wanted a path running through the space, accessing the gate at the bottom, which led to the front garden, um, and also accessing the outbuilding house too. We wanted to reuse as many plants and materials as possible, and not buy loads of um, extra things that we've already got. Um, and also we wanted the space to feel quite eclectic, um, lots of different pots, um, textures, plants, things like that, um, making it look quite kind of apocryphal like and very cute. Once I'd established what we intended to use the garden for, we set about measuring the space. Um, so I've got a LiDAR on my phone. Um, it's this little thing here. So um, as well as using a normal tape measure just to get the basic measurements, I also use my LiDAR to scan the whole area. Um, and this is really good for when you come to designing the space, if you forget a measurement or you just want to double check, um, you can go on your phone and um, all the measurements are there, you can measure every single space. So that's really good for like heights and things like that. So the measurements that you might not think about with a normal tape measure, it's really good for doing that. But a normal tape measure works just as well. When I had all the measurements, I could then finally start designing the space. So I grabbed a bit of tracing paper and began drawing out the space to scale. That's one really important thing I'd mention. Um, always do it to scale with a scale rule. You can get these from loads of different places. I think I did it to about one to 200, but obviously the scale would depend on um, what size of a plot it is. But um, yeah, I've had other projects before that I've got so excited just like full of ideas designing the garden. I've got an image from Google Maps and roughly traced it and it hasn't been to scale at all. I've then came up with a really good design that I was really pleased with. And when I eventually did come to put it in scale, it was completely out of proportion and it's really disheartening. You have to start all over again. So that's one thing I do highly recommend doing. And also doing it on a bit of tracing paper or baking paper is really useful as you can layer um, the different images. Um, which means you don't need to redraw over and over and over again. Um, and it's easy to rub out and you can just lob it in the bin if it's not great. Once I had settled on a design that I was really happy with, I transformed it into a 3D visual using a CAD software. And this is just really good for making sure everything is correctly to scale and is the right measurements. And it's also really good for um, visually interpreting what the space would actually look like and how it would all fit together really nicely. In the design, I include some raised beds, which were at varying heights, meaning that it would be really easy for picking flowers um, as it's easier to access. And also it would give a bit more interest at different seasons when there aren't any plants in the borders, um, creating a bit more height and depth. 
It was also really important to me to detract from the uneven shape of the garden um, and not create emphasis on the um, kind of wonky, uneven um, shape of it. So I did that by um, softening the walls and creating a bit more um, division between the spaces. I also wanted to make the space feel a little bit bigger than it already is. So I divided it up um, and it means that when you first enter the garden, you can't actually see the end. Um, and that creates a bit of secrecy and a bit of like, oh, what's around that corner? Um, which ultimately makes it feel a bit bigger. Alongside the annual planting, which would be the cut flowers, I've also included some shrubs like Pittosporum, um, which can not only be used for the really lovely foliage, but it also creates a bit of winter interest too. I've added um, a shelving unit type thing to divide up the space and this can be used for displaying plants in the summer. You could put out really lovely pots and have like trailing plants, um, even put a few house plants out there if it gets really hot. Um, but you could also use it as a storage type thing as well um, for when you're picking. You could just keep your string on there and your secateurs um, making it easier to pick flowers and bundle them together. I've also included um, a sort of multifunctional water butt type thing. So it can be attached to the gutter of the outbuilding um, and we can put plants in it like sort of pond plants. So it can be used for that, just a nice looking pond, but it can also be used for um, watering the nearby plants. So you can plunge a water watering can into it and water the plants that way or I was even thinking about attaching a little pipe so it really uses the water which is really nice too because it doesn't go to waste then. Um, it was also important to keep in mind the direction of the sun so um, currently this area is in full sun so I've put a, the larger raised bed here and then in the morning the opposite side of the garden gets the sun so um, I've made sure to keep that in mind where I'm putting the plants um, and then when we come to planting as well, um, we'll put in the plants that are best suited to those um, locations as well. So Josh is coming out with the um, spray can. We've got some landscaping spray. So he's got the scale drawing that Olivia did and we're gonna together mark out the path so we can see clearly where everything will be. Um, and we want to try, and this is a case of trying to sort of reuse and um, make do with lots of things that we've already got, recycle and stuff like that would be good because it looks quite, it's quite rustic-y and stuff. Um, we'd like to put a window on that potting shed um, eventually, but today my job, I get the fun jobs, is to clear out the spiders from the potting shed. Luckily I don't mind spiders, in fact I quite like spiders, which is just as well because um, I couldn't really live here if I didn't like spiders because we've got loads. So I, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to clear out the potting shed and then we need to seal up um, the holes that are in the potting shed. So that's my job. The area is all ready, it's a blank canvas ready to go. Now all we need to do is find the time and energy to put all these plans into action, which we will do in a future video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that and don't forget to like and subscribe and join us again in the next video. Bye for now.